So what is adventure motorcycling? I'm saying the, the term is loosely thrown around. They say, oh, adventure bikes are the best bikes in the world. I'm saying, well, <laughs> people who ride cruises, they say cruises are the best. Adventure bikes, the adventure bikes are the best. The 1250GS is the best. This is best, that is best. The 890 KTM is the best. I would say this is the best, 900 Tiger Rally Pro. <laughs> it's a loose term. What is adventure riding? Just think about it. Everybody's different. To me, adventure riding is, you know, going out for a few days, long distances, doing some, doing road, mostly road, that's what I do. I don't do too much off-road, but some off-road, fire roads, gravel, yes, but mostly road, 95% road. But when, by, when I talk about roads, I don't mean highways. I'm saying, what's the point? You're gonna be seeing traffic and trucks and that's all you see on the highways. I'm talking about small roads, you know, small towns, small places, windy roads, coastal roads, mountains, beautiful stuff, right? Unique stuff. That is adventure riding. Going out for even longer than two or three days, weeks, months. People do it for months. But do you really need an adventure bike to go, let's say, around the world? People say, oh, you need an adventure bike to go around the world. Do you really need one? No. When I was a kid, in Fiji Islands, I met a guy, we, actually a guy came to Fiji from India on a bicycle that didn't even have gears, it was a one gear bike and he was doing traveling around the world way back then on a bicycle and he had landed in Fiji. So people have done it on all kinds of things, on scooters, on mopeds, on cruisers, on adventure bikes, you name it. But when we talk about adventure bikes, what are we really talking about? In my opinion, I'm saying everybody's opinion is different and you know, don't, if I say something that, hey, the 1250GS is this, which is why I didn't, it didn't work for me, it didn't work for me, okay? <laughs> for my style of riding and whatever it is, it didn't work for me. If this works for me, that is great. But it doesn't mean that the bike is bad. By no means have the 1250GS is a beautiful bike or the 890 KTM is a beautiful bike. The, the Multistrada is a beautiful bike. But there are certain things. To me, adventure riding is going to unique places, small places, smaller roads, fire roads, gravel roads, but smaller roads, smaller towns, unique places like up in the mountains maybe on the coastline doing the, the, the Big Sur, for example. That's beautiful. I plan to do it soon. I've done part of it, but not all of it, which I really plan to do. I, I actually plan, my plan at one point in time is to go from the border. I'm pretty close to the border of Mexico. I'm in San Diego, California, and I'm pretty close to the border. And from the border, all the way to the next border, which is Canada. But I don't want to take Highway 5 all the way up. What's the point? If I do Highway 5 for 10 miles, it's the same Highway 5 going up. Instead of eight lanes, it might go down to like three lanes, but you'll see the same trucks, the same everything over and over again. I'm saying, what's the point? You have to take the smaller roads, the, the unique places, the, the beautiful places that come on the way. And th that those are only on the, on, the, on the windy, smaller coastal roads in smaller towns. That is what, in my opinion, adventure riding is. So what's an ideal bike for an adventure ride? I'll just give you an example. For example, if you're going, let's say, another trip I planned, by the way, is from here. I'll just give you an example. From here to the Death Valley. I plan to do that in November, actually, next month. Uh, weather, weather is nicer. In the Death Valley, it's not too hot out in the desert. Now, for me to go from here to Death Valley, for a little bit, the least minimum, I have to do some highway to get out of the city. Once I'm out of the city, then I can start taking the smaller roads through the mountains. I don't need to take the highway all the way up. It'll be faster, the highway will be faster, but it's no fun. <laughs> so what's the point? I plan to take the smaller roads, take my time with it. So once you're on the highway, what's the ideal bike for a highway? Is it this bike? No. Probably a heavier bike would be better. 
the Ducati Multistrada I, ha I used to have would be awesome on the highway. One, once it got going, it was like a breeze. I'm sorry, I would be riding 80, 90 miles an hour <laughs> and you wouldn't feel it, even higher. Like I'm saying, hey, I don't want to say how much I was riding it at, but you won't feel it. On this, yeah, you would, at 80, 90, you know, you know you're riding 80, 90, well, not at 80, but yeah, above that, yeah, you know it. So part of it is highway. Then the other part of it is the smaller roads. Now, what's an ideal bike for a smaller road? This bike. What's an ideal bike for fire roads or gravel? Maybe even a lighter bike like the Tenere 700 or even lighter to go even more off-road if you want to go more off-road. I'm saying this, might, this bike might get a little heavy by then. So there is a compromise that you have to make that one bike cannot do everything. I'm saying we do label bikes as, okay, this is an adventure bike, this is a cruiser, this is this, this is that. But there is no single bike that can do everything. <laughs> so there's a compromise that you have to make a little bit, which is that, okay, if a bike is not too heavy, but not too light either. I'm saying if it's too light and you're on a major highway and a truck passes you by, you'll feel it. I felt it. <laughs> So, <laughs> on the other hand, a heavier bike off-road, you might start feeling the weight. After, you know, you might say, hey man, I can do it, right? Yeah, you can do it. I'm saying, you know, you can do anything. But after, think about it, like, you know, adventure riding is not a one-day ride. It's not a one-hour ride. It's multi-day ride and you get tired. You get tired after three or four days of riding. You should take a rest anyways in between but you know day after day after day after day you know you could say hey you know I could be riding on the highway at like 120 miles an hour we're fine yeah you can do it I can do it on this too but if I'm riding for a good solid one hour or two hours at 120 miles an hour it's not safe I'm saying we are humans right we get tired a typical adventure ride would involve some city some highway smaller roads, even smaller roads, twisty roads, mountainous roads, maybe the coastline, and maybe some, some gravel, some fire roads to get to places that you really like unique places. Um, and you know, if you want to go even further off road, like hardcore off road, even that. So the compromise is that you need a bike that is good for the city, good for the highway, good enough, good en I would say good enough for the city, good enough for the highway, good enough for the smaller roads, and, and good enough for the off-road. And maybe if you have the, the skill and, and the skill to do it, even further hardcore off-road. Is there a bike, a perfect bike for everything? No, there is nothing like that out there. I've done a lot of research. So, the compromise is that, okay, the bike must not be too light. It must, must not be too heavy either. Um, it should have enough wind protection when you need it on the highway, for example, and, uh, you know, with, with the wind. It may not be like, you know, if it's not a very heavy bike, it might not have a big tank in front like my Ducati Multistrada had. Uh, it had excellent wind protection, by the way. Um, that had the b best wind protection that I've ever done. The next best was 1250GS, and this is the third best in terms of wind protection, okay? Mm -hmm. This windshield, the Triumph guys said that they had put it through a wind tunnel, and I can see, yes, they did it. This is an awesome windshield. I wouldn't change it for anything. No, no aftermarket, nothing. This is the tr original Triumph windshield, and this is very protective. It's good enough for me that it doesn't, you know, at 80 miles, 85 miles an hour, it doesn't move my head around. Not too much anyways. It's, it's good enough for me. It's good enough. Besides, I don't ride 80, 85 miles an hour on a constant basis. It's basically to get onto a major highway, to get out to someplace else. Most of my riding is on the smaller roads. So this bike, for me, is the perfect bike for all uh, the, 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 the smaller roads. 
The next thing that every bike should have, whether it is adventure, whether it is cruiser, whatever it is, even a moped, even a scooter, even anything, is visibility. You need to be visible. You need to be visible. Which is why I did go for these these fog lights. It's not for for fashion or for show. I'm saying it looks good also, by the way. <laughs> you have three lights like that. But I can see on the highway and in, on the smaller roads, if I'm approaching someone, I know that they can see me. I can sense it. And they, they do it because it's, 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 it's a triangle, three lights. So I think that's a must for almost anything out there, to be honest with you. If you're doing some sort of like, especially on the highways, um, where, where there's a chance of people cutting in front of you, please do it. Right? So visibility is important, weather protection is important, the weight of the bike. I'm going to make a separate video on the weight. The weight on the, of the bike, I think, is very important because the reason is that, you know, it has to be, the bike has to be such that you need to be able to handle it easily. <laughs> and when I mean by handling it easy, you might say, hey, you know, I can handle freaking thousand pound bike yeah you can I'm sure you can that's fine that's great I'm saying it's great for you I'm talking about me here right after three four five days of riding well every third day I take at least a day's rest anyways or I try to at least half a day's rest if not uh, you know three days of hard riding and then one day rest three days of hard riding one day rest is a is a good formula that works for me so after six, seven days, eight days, you know, tiredness builds in. <laughs> and, and you need to have a bike where you, at the end of a long, hard day, if you want to put it on a center stand, you should be able to do it easily. And please, <laughs> I know you'll be saying, hey, I can put a 1100-pound uh, 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 like gold, gold wing on a center stand, it's no problem, right? Yes, you can. I'm sure you can, right? I could do it too. But I used to, <laughs> at times, I would struggle with the Ducati and at times I would struggle with the 1250 GS just to get it on the center stand just because I'm so, I was so tired. Right? This bike here, the Tiger 900 Rally Pro, is I would say it's heavy, heavier than the Tenere. I would say the Tenere is probably the, uh, is one of the best bikes, or the KLR also, uh, for, for adventure travel. Um, to me, they seem to be a bit too light for the highways, right? I needed something in between the 1250GS and the Tenere. And this is pretty much weight-wise right in between. The center of gravity of this bike sits lower. Again, I, I know I mentioned it in my last video. I don't know what the Triumph guys did with it, but whatever they did works. <laughs> they said that they did, you know, some something with the engine. They moved it around. I, I don't know what they did. You, you got you got to do your own research. If you go on the website, they will tell you, hey, what's new for the 900 from the 800 series? Uh, they will tell you what they did. So you, you can see that. But whatever they did is good. This, the center of gravity sits low. Uh, it handles nicely. It's easy to turn around, corner around. It's easy to do U-turns on it. It's, uh, I find it very easy to do circles both ways. Um, I'm sorry, I literally ride it like a 300, 400 cc bike, like a trainer bike. <laughs> but that's my experience. Uh, and I wanted to share it with you and I wanted to share my thoughts on adventure riding. I hope it's helpful to you guys. Um, I'll put some shots. I've added some shots of me riding the bike. I've ridden it, ridden it for almost like 11, 1200 miles now. Uh, I'm taking it in for its first service uh, on in three days from today. Um, the very first service. And uh, so far, I'm, I've had no issues with the bike whatsoever. I'm really, really, really happy with the bike, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm, I can say with some conviction that this is probably one of the best bikes that I have ever had. And I was a little apprehensive when I got it, uh, that because of my experience with the 890 KTM, and again, the bike, the 890 KTM was not a bad bike. It was an excellent bike. It was an awesome bike to ride, ride around. 
but I just had some back issues with the bike, like I started getting back muscular pain uh, after long rides. And um, it was because of the way I was sitting on the bike and I just couldn't get it corrected. I tried changing the seats around the handlebars, and but it just, it just didn't work. Uh, so I decided to sell that bike and then I did a lot of research and I was kind of like, you know, once they say you've been burnt, you, 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 you touch things with a very sensitive finger then, everything, right? So I was touching everything with a sensitive finger and I was trying to do as much research as I could. I was trying to ride as many uh, demo bikes as I could. And um, unfortunately, I couldn't get hold of a Tenere 700. Otherwise, I might have gone for that. I just couldn't get hold of one to ride because there's nothing available. <laughs> it's all sold out. So th even this one was like literally sold out and I finally got one, hold of one, rode it around uh, and now I'm really glad that I got it.